When the U.S. State Department puts up a $5 million bounty for information on a man's whereabouts, you know that's a powerful man. This is the story of Eduardo Arellano Felix, a former leader of the Tijuana Cartel, one of the most feared and most violent criminal groups in Mexico's history. If you stick around long enough, you will find out how Arellano Felix became an influential figure of epic proportions in Mexico's drug trafficking world. If you enjoy content like this, we've got more for you. Give this video a thumbs up to help others find it and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified every time we post a new video. Eduardo Arellano Felix was born in Culiacan, Mexico in October 1956 to Benjamin Francisco Arellano Sanchez and Norma Alicia Felix Azueta. His father grew up in Durango but relocated to Sinaloa where he met Eduardo's mother in the 1940s. He and his brothers grew up around the drug business but he managed to get a medical degree. He was nicknamed El Gualin and El Doctor, the doctor. For his history as a medical doctor, he rose to fame or infamy during a very violent era in Tijuana when the Tijuana cartel was involved in multiple criminal activities including drug trafficking, racketeering, murder, bribery, kidnapping, and other unlawful businesses. Tijuana is a small Mexican tourist town south of California. It's a border region between Mexico and the U.S. Two very close business partners in the illicit drug trafficking space with 90% of the cocaine in America coming from or through Mexico. Tijuana has been home to many deadly cartels that have fought for superiority and control over the strategically important region for decades. One of the most successful of these criminal groups is the Arellano Felix Organization or metonymously Tijuana Cartel for its base in the Tijuana area of Baja California. The Arellano Felix Organization was an offshoot of the Guadalajara Cartel headed by Arellano's uncle Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, nicknamed El Jefe de Jefes, Boss of All Bosses, or El Padrino, the Godfather. The capture and incarceration of Miguel Angel in 1989 for his complicity in the death of DEA agent Enrique Kiki Camarena resulted in the dissolution of the mighty Guadalajara cartel. His chief lieutenant, who had probably been waiting for a chance to branch out and control their own organizations, saw this 40-year sentence as a golden chance to establish themselves as forces in the organized crime industry. So, when the final word came of the Godfather's incarceration, his expensive cartel was shredded and divided into three parts. Aside from the Tijuana cartel, two other factions, the Sinaloa cartel, led by Hector Luis Palma Salazar, Ismael Zambada Garcia, El Mayo, and Joaquin Guzman Lorea, popularly known as El Chapo, and the Juarez cartel, controlled by Amado Carrillo Fuentes, were also formed. These three bodies would later develop into arch enemies in the war for regional control and expansion. Alongside his brothers, Benjamin, Carlos, Francisco, Javier, Francisco Rafael, and Ramon, and their sister Enedina, Eduardo helped ensure the reign of the Arellano Felix drug empire for almost two decades. Eduardo was the most refined of the brothers and the chief financial officer of the cartel who laundered the cartel's wealth through real estate and other enterprises. The Tijuana cartel was allegedly responsible for several murders and illegal trafficking of tons of marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine. They controlled drug trafficking routes into the U.S. for over 20 years. Eduardo was a principal advisor to his brother, Benjamin, aka El Señor, who oversaw the rise of the cartel between the late 1980s and early 1990s. Eduardo's financial knowledge and guidance were essential in the entrenchment of the Tijuana cartel's name in organized crime history. Eduardo, a superficially reserved but reportedly dangerous administrator of the cartel, went into perpetual hiding after he was alleged to have had a hand in the 1993 killing of the Archbishop of Guadalajara, Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo. According to John Kirby, a former U.S. prosecutor and co-writer of the original indictment against Eduardo, he said, That was a pivotal moment in how the Arellanos were perceived in Tijuana and all of Mexico. All of a sudden, everybody was their enemy. Eduardo's estranged wife and mother of his daughter, Alicia, was also allegedly killed by Arellano gunmen for her suspected cooperation with U.S. officials. After the capture of the then-boss Francisco Javier by U.S. authorities in Baja, California, on August 16, 2006, the mantle of leadership fell on him. Eduardo was sanctioned under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Act for his involvement in drug trafficking along with nine other international crimes and two entities. 
This act prohibited U.S. citizens and companies from doing any form of business with him and froze all of his assets in the U.S. He steered the ship of the Tijuana cartel until his arrest in 2008. The U.S. State Department had offered $5 million for information leading to his arrest and on October 26, 2008, on an evening in Tijuana, at some minutes past 5 p.m., 100 officers of the Mexican Federal Police, or the Federales, as they were called before President Andres Manuel Obrador, absorbed them into the National Guard on 1st of October 2019, stormed Eduardo's three-tier mansion in the Fraccionamiento, Pedregal suburb of Tijuana, where he had been living under a fake name. The armed standoff that followed ended prematurely due to his 11-year-old daughter Alicia's presence in the building at the time. He had to drop the shooting to prevent his daughter from being hurt or killed in the crossfire. He was arrested and taken into the custody of the Mexican authorities. A recent YouTube video of the besieged mansion by a channel called Badabun revealed some interesting details about the building and the life of the chief financial operator of the Tijuana cartel. The head baron's Tijuana home, now covered in dust and abandoned, featured two kitchens, a living room, a main room, a dining room, a lobby, and a basement. A gym was found on the third floor, with some of the equipment still intact, and old magazines and newspapers were also discovered in the luxurious home, showing Eduardo enjoyed updating himself with the latest information, a testament to the claim of his sophistication. A dismantled red Mustang veiled in dust was also found in this parking lot. Signs of the heavy discharge of firearms during his arrest could be seen inside and outside the building, which was peppered with bullet holes from all angles. Alicia's toys were strewn all over the floors, and she was definitely precious to him. He had lost an infant son in a propane gas explosion that left him badly burned in 1998. The authorities identified him with the burn marks on his skin, as he had been in the background for a long time and almost unrecognizable when he was found. To quote the words of a spokesperson for the Mexican law enforcement, after Eduardo's capture, the people said, This is a big blow to what is left of the organization. The blow was more impactful because, in the months leading to the apprehension of Eduardo, infighting in the cartel between Fernando Sanchez Arellano Felix, aka El Ingeniero, the engineer, and a long-term lieutenant and cartel leader, notorious for stewing or dissolving his victims, Teodoro Garcia Cimental, El Teo, had greatly fragmented the organization. The power tussle between the two had allegedly taken a death toll of over 150 lives in Tijuana within a month. The gruesome war left bodies dissolved in acid and mutilated bodies with severed tongues and carvings of warning messages in their fleshes. One gory incident had numerous severed heads placed on top of torsos. It was probably this unbearable wave of violence that turned up the heat on the cartel with the then president of Mexico, Felipe Calderón, looking to silence criticisms of his government's perceived neglect of the war against organized crime. So the blow wasn't only big, it was also timely. It was a victory for the government and the rivals of the Tijuana cartel, such as the Sinaloa and Juarez, who had been waiting for a perfect time to prey on their tired foes and claim parts of their territories. Eduardo was later extradited to the U.S. to face trial for charges of money laundering, drug trafficking, and other crimes. He is the last of the Arellano brothers to be extradited for a 2003 indictment for racketeering, drug trafficking, money laundering, and several killings. A statement from the U.S. Justice Department stated, The indictment alleges that the leadership of the Arellano Felix Organization, or AFO, negotiated directly with the Colombian cocaine trafficking organizations for the purchase of multi-ton shipments of cocaine, received those shipments by sea and by air in Mexico, and then arranged for the smuggling of the cocaine into the U.S. and its further distribution throughout the U.S. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison, which was the maximum sentence under the plea deal by a San Diego court for conspiracy and money laundering charges. This was a reduced sentence when compared to what his brothers got, and it was because the U.S. court considered him less involved in the unsavory aspects of the Tijuana cartel's operations. But Judge Larry A. Burns reminded Eduardo that he was convinced all the same because he was very much aware of his criminal acts. The judge also reprimanded him by saying he should be ashamed of his actions because they hurt the community and U.S.-Mexico ties. Eduardo was released after completing eight of his 15-year sentence. This was due to his cooperative behavior while in the U.S. federal low security, Allenwood Prison in White Deer, Pennsylvania. Even his defense attorney called him a model prisoner during his sentencing. After his release, he was handed over to the Mexican authorities at a border crossing. A statement from Mexico's Attorney General's office, released on August 23, 2021, reported that, at 5.15 p.m. today, at the Brownsville-Metamoros International Bridge, the Office of the Attorney General, or FGR, 
in the Mexican army received Eduardo A. to carry out an arrest warrant against him for his probable responsibility in organized crime crimes against health and criminal association. On getting to Mexico, he was immediately transferred to the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 1, a maximum security prison facility known as El Altiplano in Almoloya de Juarez, state of Mexico. He remains in the custody of Mexican authorities facing organized crime charges. The U.S. Justice Department said in 2013 that court documents showed that the Arellano brothers were responsible for moving hundreds of tons of cocaine and marijuana worth hundreds of millions of dollars from Mexico and Colombia into the U.S. Eduardo was the last of the brothers to be sentenced or killed in connection to the cartel's activities. What's left of the syndicate is now under the leadership of Eduardo's sister and Edina. The weakened and less influential Cartel Tijuana Nueva Generacion had been fighting to wrestle Tijuana back from the Sinaloa cartel, who have dominated the area since the capture of Eduardo. And Edina maintains the operations of the cartel with the help of connections in Colombia. There also have been reports of alliances with rival groups to fight the dominance of the Sinaloa cartel. Eduardo Arellano Felix was a member and later leader of a ruthless criminal gang that engaged in every thinkable crime, but he was also a loving father to his daughter. How do we balance the idea of such a violent personality with the image of a caring parent? This just shows that human beings are capable of exhibiting all kinds of behavior and eventually every man must pay for his crimes. Did we miss anything about El Doctor? Or do you have a comment about the man? Leave your comments and suggestions below and remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more fantastic content. Thanks for watching. See you in another video.